All right, Lordstown Motors. Two scenarios. First one's rosy. Second one, not so rosy. Check it out. All right, uh, I am making this video because we have an earnings call coming up with uh, Lordstown Motors. And this is super critical for the stock, for the company, for the investors, for the stockholders. I've worked out two scenarios here that are pro possible outcomes. I think they're fairly realistic. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, but, you know, Foxconn, as always, uh, is a major part of this. And this whole deal is on a razor's edge. Okay. So I'm just going to say up front, this is an extremely risky endeavor, extremely risky stock. But let me just start with what I call the rosy scenario. Here it is right here, rosy. Foxconn deal goes through without a hitch, and I say better than 50% chance, in my opinion, that this is going to happen. Now, when I say better than 50%, 51%, okay, but I do think uh, the odds of it happening are greater than the odds of it not happening. But let's take a look. Uh, first of all, I have down here, looks like uh, HR posts are changing from Lordstown Motors to Foxconn. There was a Twitter post on this. Uh, the same recruiting posts that were for positions for Lordstown are now relisted as positions with Foxconn. So it implies uh, confidence the factory will go to Foxconn. I mean, Foxconn, somebody's confident about this because they've changed the whole recruiting uh regime so again deal goes through without a hitch okay so what do we have when that happens contract manufacturing and endurance starts early i have april now there was some breadcrumbs on this we don't know i think the deal will close in april uh if it closes and i think as soon as it closes we're going to start production that's in my opinion. I don't know. Uh, LMC cash is bolstered by the Fox sales income. There's that. There's also um, uh, other factors. Uh, they have a, a mortgage with Foxconn and so forth. But uh, we do know that the final payments from the Fox sale are coming in April-ish. So there's going to be, you know, I think 50 million, uh, maybe uh, perhaps more than that. You can review my last videos on this. I've gone over this in detail. Uh, my estimation is uh, that Lordstown will have enough money to start production just enough. <laughs> okay. Razor's edge, as always, with Lordstown. Uh, but again, we've got the uh, deal closing and payments come in with the closing of the deal. I have down here, Fox takes uh, more actions to prop up LNC. You know, if push comes to shove, uh, Fox may make another stock purchase. In my opinion, there's some things that could happen. Uh, Foxconn really wants in electric vehicles they are absolutely positively uh pivoting their entire corporation to electric vehicles no doubt about it so you know would uh fox buy more stock yeah would fox maybe buy some bonds i don't know i'm just saying uh if they had to now, there's another side to this scenario as well we're going to go through next. But if they had to, I think they would prop up LMC because they do want to start uh, EV manufacturing. Now, I just want to say one thing. Ford 
isn't going to go online till next year. Silverado isn't going to go online till a year after that. Cybertruck year after that. Rivian is, I don't know if anybody remembers the Lincoln Continental pickup truck that came out. That's what the Rivian is. It's not even a player in this. Lordstown is through homologation, homologation, whatever the hell it is, and they are ready to go. They're ready to go. They're the only truck that's really ready to go at this point in time, EV, fleet truck, or consumer truck, really. Now, I have down here, there's another part of this rosy scenario. The ATVM loan goes through for both Fox and Lordstown Motors. Uh, Schmidt, the former president of LMC, said they were going for $220 million mil minimal. Okay. So I have down here 220. So if they get that loan, and by the way, Foxconn has also applied for this loan in tandem with Lordstown Motors, and Foxconn is an expert at getting these types of loans in the countries they're working in. So uh, let's say LMC gets 220 million cash infusion from that. So you, uh, if they do get that, and they might get propped up by LMC and they also get that uh, 50 mil or whatever it is the case is uh, their last final payment or payment or two I think there's two payments actually that come in late so and also would would uh, they've got that mortgage vehicle which I am not certain I understand that even to this day uh, but uh, Foxconn may even take more actions to prop up uh, uh, LMC so let's say they get the LMC uh, $220 million cash infusion as well. So the deal closes. They get the cash from uh, the final cash pay payment from the sale. Uh, Fox pledges support. The ATVM loan goes through. Um, so we're looking at, you know, let's say $300 million. I th I think that's enough to start production. I think so. Uh, at this point, the stock surges. And if we get up around 10 or $12 a share, they can execute the revolving stock credit line they have and trade stock for cash there as well and not incur debt and still have zero debt on the, on the balance sheet. So there's all kind of funding that can happen uh, potentially. Uh, and, uh, I would just say, um, well, let's just go into the, uh, here's the thing, um, uh, would Foxconn absorb LMC? I believe I go through this in the next section, section, would they buy out LMC to stay in business? I, you know, some of these agreements are set up almost in that direction. There are poison pills in some of these agreements. I think the poison pills are put in more to make sure that this gets through the CFAS uh, uh, approval. Uh, but uh, the thing is, Foxconn wants to be a contract manufacturer of electric vehicles. Now, I know they've announced their own prototypes. It's all very confused right now. But just like and I've mentioned this before, they do not, their policy is not to compete with their customers, okay? If they bought LMC or absorbed LMC in-house and it became their brand, then they would be competing uh, with potential customers, Ford, Chevy, whoever else decides to make a uh, electric pickup. I don't know if, I don't know if Foxconn wants to do that. Maybe they do. That would be a total change in their modus uh, operandi for the last, you know, I don't know how many years. You know, you got the Apple iPhone, okay? You don't have the Foxconn phone, okay? This is what I'm talking about. Uh, Alan, and that, okay, the stock goes up. They use so so. In other words, they raise a lot of capital. This is these dominoes all fall together. Uh. LMC announces a sedan. Okay. There's rumors uh, online that somebody went to their facility in Orange County, California, and there was a sedan there. I don't know. 
Um, so could they announce another product? Maybe. I mean, the van, uh, their delivery van, high top van, has the soft dies made, not the high hard uh, production dies, but that's the next iteration there. That's just the CapEx uh, that they're holding back on. Uh, but uh, this is this is something that could happen as well. A new product could be announced. Uh, now, I just noticed that, and I was watching um, uh, AutoLine, and they said uh, they were talking about, oh, fleets buying EVs and this and that. And... Those guys, I felt, were misrepresenting it because they were saying, um, uh, you, you know, these fleets, they uh, they want to buy off a, a, a brand manufacturer. Well, the thing is, they're under pressure to meet environmental goals, and none of these other trucks are going to be available, okay? If these dominoes all fall in line, the Lordstown Endurance is going to be the only one that's going to be available to buy today. But anyway... Even going by what they say, they they say that a recent survey said only 25% of fleets will use a new manufacturer without an established, um, you know, dealership network or whatever you want to call it. Well, if that means that uh, Lordscon can start with 25% of the market, good enough, I think. I think that's a very good start. Once the vehicles prove themselves, they're going to have a year or two before any of these other trucks are even available. So I don't think the fleets are going to wait. I think they're going to, and I, and I think LMC, uh, you know, already has orders. You can see my past uh, videos on this. So LMC will be first and take the 25% market share of the uh, unknown manufacturers. Uh, and then uh, this 25% market share will be a prof, uh, proof of concept. Concept sales increase. Fox manufacturing, contract manufacturing can handle it and keep the quality up. Then global, global sales start. Uh, you know, the EU first. And again, we're going to have a year ahead of all these other electric pickups. You know, a lot of these countries are, are demanding all EV municipal fleets, so forth. So people are saying, well, this truck's too big for the EU. Well, you know what? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe, uh, you know, they're, if they're demanding EVs, if they're demanding a percentage of fleets be EVs, and the endurance is the only EV, I think they're going to take a look at it. Okay? I think there's going to be European sales. Asia, perhaps, China, perhaps. We know Foxconn has distribution all over the world. But let's just say EU. Let's just say London or, you know, municipal. I think they're, they're planning on having London be all EV. So that's an example. And uh, our next product to launch is the high top van. And that can, that can be put in production quickly because it uses the same skateboard as the Endurance. Different dyes, but it has to go through homolog homologation, which should be easier the second time around. There also has to be crash testing and so forth. But again, they're all very experienced at doing that and doing that with this electric vehicle. And I think that whole uh, process time should be cut in half, really. Uh, I think they're going to announce the SUV. The SUV was planned on being the second vehicle after the pickup truck. It's on the same frame as the pickup truck. Again, homologation, crash testing, they already know how to do it. Same frame, same battery, same drive system, different body. Perfect. Uh, and also, uh, I think uh, once they start sales uh, in fleets, I think it's not going to be too short after, shortly after that. That they're gonna they're gonna start consumer sales. They're gonna start selling direct to consumers as well. Okay, so that's the rosy scenario. Basically, the ro rosy scenario says the deal goes through. They they get the ATVM loan. They have enough capital, uh, opex capital to prime the pumps and get things going, and they have the support of uh, Foxconn.
okay? And then they move on uh, and expand from this, take a 25% of the fleet uh, market, use that base as a proof of concept, you know, be able to spit out uh, statistics and so forth. And I have, by the way, uh, an article I'm going to, uh, I hope to go over at the end of this presentation, where, um, you know, Lordstown just tweeted out, they're talking about the hub motors. They said, the crash testing that the vehicles did, the hub motors that were on the trucks that were crash tested, they still work. They went through the crash testing, and they still work. I'll tell you, I think that's a lot to say about durability right there. And, you know, we can go over the lower cost and blah, 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 how, how much is the better. Let, let's just go through that. So that's the rosy scenario. That's all you know, puppy dogs and uh, whatever, sugar cookies, okay? And I think that that has, let's say, a 51% chance. I think a better chance of success than failure, but it's a close margin. Now, let's just go into the dark and stormy. And again, I have less than 50%, so maybe 49, 51, okay? Uh, uh, right now, LMC stock is falling to all-time lows. It could, you know, it could fall. It could be forced down. Could it be delisted? delisted? Let's hope not. You know, could it go over the counter? Let's hope not. Okay. Anyway, as, as the stock keeps falling and falling, we have a delisting or we have a, you know, a crisis in the stock price. The LMC Foxconn deal, you know, there's an announcement to deals on hold. Then we have the CIFA certification. This is critical. This is a, a, a group of American uh, political organizations, deep state kind of stuff that has to approve a foreign manufacturer uh, basically buying a plant in the United States. Let's say that stalls or no decision is made. I'm expecting a decision in April. If that stalls, that is going to hold everything up. And then I have that, and that's really not going to be good. Uh, ride stock falls to a dollar, delisted by NASDAQ, goes over the counter. Very bad. Uh, the endurance start of production is stalled because of the, the, uh, the CFIS non-approval, the Foxconn deal is uh, not approved, is on hold. Uh, no announcement on a new new timeline. So everything gets frozen like it was right before the pro, uh, the uh, Foxconn purchase, purchase, okay? Of course, at this point, LMC isn't going to be able to raise capital. Debt, junk bonds, maybe. At this point, and this is something that could happen, I don't know. As I said, it has been Foxconn's MO not to compete with potential customers or not to compete with customers. The MIH pro, uh, platform that they're using, by the way, is developed by a group of Asian companies. It's not a Foxconn uh, platform per, per se per se. Distinction without a difference, I don't know. Same thing goes for their autonomous driving and their operating user experience uh, system. So it's technically not Foxconn, but you know, whatever. All right. So Foxconn could buy a ride outright for a dollar a share. Take away everything. Okay. Let's say that doesn't happen. Let's say the Foxconn deal is killed by Cephas. Let's say Cephas gives him a thumbs down. There's all kind of poison pills in the agreements, okay? One of them is LMC must repay all the funds forwarded by Foxconn to him. They ain't going to have that money. They're going to have to find a new buyer for a plant. They can't find a new buyer for the plant, okay? So, this set of dominoes 
and this could happen in any order, okay? But I'm just saying, if these things happen, you know, going concern notice, the second going concern notice, Q1 2022, I don't know. Uh, like I say, LMC is acquired by Foxconn for a dollar share or alternatively LSC, uh, LMC uh, files bankruptcy. That's it. So this is a, this is another set of things that could happen. And these are some of the factors and I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I do give it a like less than 50% chance of happening. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> let's say uh, 49 percent so as you can see we're on a razor's edge here everything goes well they get the atvm loan they can raise capital stock price goes up blah 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 uh deal is halted the cephas approval doesn't go through uh all these horrible other things happen uh, when these poison pills go into effect that are in the in the contracts, as I said, I think more of a poison pill for this than any poison pill to Lordstown. In other words, they're saying to the approving entities in the U.S. government, look, you don't approve this. It's going to be on you. You're going to, you know, you're going to ruin this company. My opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Um Anyway, LMC files bankruptcy. And, and and this also, again, portends that Foxconn is going to buy a manufacturing comp a brand and compete with its own clients, something it doesn't do. <coughs> and it implies a predatory stance by Foxconn. And some people could say, you know, they are... They are in a predatory stance because they see that they saw that uh, Foxconn was in trouble. They came in. Uh, but the other side of that coin is they saw a great opportunity, a great technology, uh, a, a vehicle that's easy to manufacture, low cost to manufacture, easy to keep quality up on. Uh, that's the other side of that coin. So, but again, we're looking at 51%. All good, 49% all bad. That's how close you are. So if you're investing in this company, and I am not a financial advisor, this is a case study. I say it's a case study about the myth of entrepreneurship in the United States. And the reason I say that is you got an entrepreneur here who has been working on electric pickup trucks for, <clears throat> you know, 15 years, whatever. It finally gets his time in the sun and... He's an entrepreneur. This is America. He goes public. He raises money. This should this should all happen. But it doesn't. Forces a line against him. And I have a video coming up for Aptera on this. But the point is, there's a myth of entrepreneurship in the United States. There's, I mean, Elon Musk used social media, particularly YouTube, uh, which was very new or, or newer at the time and that's how he overcame uh the evil forces okay uh lordstown uh a little later in the game anyway moving on so that i i hope i've outlined those two for you uh it could really go all good and it could really go all bad we don't know until we get a uh you know, the earnings call. And we're going to see then uh, what the deal is. And um, and the one thing I forgot to mention here is, too, at, at the close of this deal, Fox is going to reimburse Lordstown for a per percentage of the operating expenses. We don't know how much that's going to be, but that's going to be additional uh, OPEX uh, cash that they have. So, now, I'm going to give you my my opinion on this. Not a uh, not a uh, financial advisor. Here it is. Foxconn 
Extreme risk, potential outcomes are closed, black, black box, no information out of Lordstown. The main known is that Foxconn really wants this to happen. And uh, I don't know if someone's knocking at the door or not. The world's largest, it's, it's the world's largest electronics manufacturer. Uh, it's the fourth largest technology company in the world. This is what we know for sure. They really want this to happen. And I don't think, so that's, that's, that's a big force in favor of this happening. And I don't think people understand how big Foxconn is. And you look at, these are, these are the uh, technology. These aren't auto firms, but these are technology firms. You got number one, you got Apple. Then you got Samsung. Then you got Alphabet. Number four is Foxconn. Okay? After Apple and Alphabet, Foxconn, Samsung. Look who Foxconn's ahead of. It's ahead of Microsoft, Huawei, Dell, Facebook, Sony, Hitachi, Intel, IBM, Tencent, Panasonic, Lenovo, HP, LG. Okay, the point being, Foxconn is big business, okay? And big business wants something, big business usually gets it. Now, are they, are, are they going to, are they going to do it any way possible? I think they are. I think they want, my personal opinion, I think they want um, Lordstown to remain independent because of them not wanting to compete with their own customers. And I think they want to get in EVs and they want to do it quickly. The CEO of, of, of Foxconn has said this, they want to do it yesterday. And this endurance is the, it is the vehicle right now. It is on the edge, the market's there, as long as the truck is homologated, uh, you know, if all the stars align, this is my opinion on why, uh, I, this is why I give it a 51% chance of, of happening. Our rich Chinese uncle, and let me tell you, Taiwanese, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. I mean, you look at this, bigger than Microsoft. <laughs> bigger than Facebook. Facebook's pretty big. Okay? And this is a, but this is a big deal. This is big business. This is international big business. This is a major force in the world. And they want this to happen. And that's uh where I am putting uh the emphasis on this and you can look at this list. I mean, these guys are right up there with the biggest companies in the world. Apple's number one. I don't know where, well, you can see these revenues. And I don't even think these uh, these, these revenues are, 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 are hampered by the, uh, I don't know when this is. I think this is 21 revenues. But anyway, they aren't even the full revenues for Foxconn. But anyway, that's my presentation on this. I'll just leave this right here. Um, great. Uh, I. I this is so close. We're going to have to wait for the earnings call. If they're not ready to announce, this could be a nothing earnings call, like the Angela Strand call was before the Foxconn deal, where they said nothing, basically, just the facts, ma'am. They took basically no questions. Might be the same thing if the deal isn't closed. If the deal is closed, we're going to know more. Uh, I just watched Q's Views. He did a video on this. Q's gone a little bearish. Uh, he's saying if the uh, if the spending uh, doesn't drop below, they're they're spending ninety million a, a quarter. He's saying if the spending doesn't drop below, uh, doesn't cut in half or or more, that they're going to be uh spiraling down the drain i again 
is Q wrong? Uh, not really. But personally, I've done one analysis in the past, and I recently looked at the numbers again. My opinion, right on the razor's edge, they're going to have enough money to start production. So, I okay, this is MXUX. This is the next. Uh, uh, section on this and uh, Q's views mentioned this today Angela Strand who was the interim acting CEO before Danny Niavaji was brought in uh, she just got half of her shares uh, there was an inside sale and I watched Q's views on this I find uh, I am bored by these financial things although uh, in my past experience I was a headhunter for a while this issue did come up I, I it was just it's just uh annoying to me to even uh consider this kind of i don't consider it important that's <laughs> there you go that's why you shouldn't take advice from me anyway we got angela here correction lordstown motors director disposes of stock for tax purposes uh update reflects changes related to the end of stock of the trans of the stock transfer the intent the intent of the stock transfer. Uh, earlier version of the story erroneously characterized the transaction as a sale. We regret the error. Okay. Uh, Director of Lordstown Motors, which is Angela, I think she did a great job, and I think she, I think she's a. I really like her skill set. She's in with a uh, new V. Uh, she knows where EVs are going. She, she knows this business, in my opinion. Uh, Director of Lord has disposed of nearly half of her shares in the startup electric manufacturer for tax purposes, according to the documents filed with the Securities and Exchange Exchange. Okay, so half her shares have gone, were sold, disposed of her shares in the startup for tax purposes. Now, I'm going to try to explain this. You guys do your own research on this. Uh, was named executive chairwoman, filed for interim duties of CEO uh, after Burns left, disposed of 22,000 shares to satisfy tax, tax withholding requirements on January 17th at 311 a share. Okay. So, not a very good price. Could have done it sooner. Could have got a better deal. Anyway, now listen to this. It does not prevent, present a sale by the reporting person, according to the SEC. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the shares were withheld by the issuer which is Lordstown Motors Company, to satisfy the reporting person's withholding tax obligation. So, you know, uh, this is some accounting speak here. Anyway, uh, they weren't sold. They were withheld uh, to satisfy the withholding tax obligation. And, you know, when you're... Uh, when you're issued stock and uh, and the options uh, 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 come due and become stock and so forth, uh, that's a capital gain and there's taxes due on that. That that may be part of it when they vest, you know. Uh, also, I don't know how they're. Uh, maybe she had some unique income uh, because of her CEO role for a short time. Anyway, the point is. Uh, the share uh, does not represent a sale by the reporting person. Now, uh, Q's view, shout out to Q. He says it doesn't matter. You know, it's still a reduction. I I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, I had mentioned, I had made a comment on one of Q's previous, because as I said, I have heard, I, I have heard of this happening uh, before uh, when I was headhunting. Uh, this type of thing, uh, cash value of uh, sixty-eight thousand. You know that that's not. No, I don't want to upgrade. That's not that that matters of an amount. 
Stand still to listen and receive five fifty thousand restricted units as part of a compensation package. Uh, Dan Daniel Navaji, blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, CEO Burns cashed out three point two million shares. He's got a lot of lawyer bills to pay. I'm not going to hold it against him. Uh, with the SEC and the DOG blade breathing down his neck for stating the obvious which he knew before anyone else they were accusing him well you're just you're just uh, having these companies drum up sales for your company and burns said no this is a completely new market we have no idea what the demand is i have people out there beating the bushes trying to find out who's going to buy these things you don't understand when burns was doing this he was the trailblazer there was no uh silverado there was no uh, lightning he was the first one and there was no idea what the demand was going to be, especially among fleets. Uh, Lord Sun Motor Stock, blah, 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 heavy pressure. Anyway, that's the thing, okay? Uh, intent of stock transfer for tax purposes. Um, it does not represent a sale by the reporting person. The shares were withheld by the issuer. Okay. Um, that would be Lord Sam Motors uh, to satisfy the reporting person's withholding tax obligation. You guys can research this. It's not an outright sale. Tomato, tomato is a distinction without a difference. As I said, I have heard of this happening before myself. Uh, it, uh, and it has to do with options vesting exercising options i don't know maybe someone can tell us what this all means in the comments all right let me move on to the next section here you know how they crash test vehicles fun crash side crash you know that uh driver's side hitting the driver's side for a head-on side swipe all the motors that came off the crash test vehicle still function I don't know if the what else do you need to say? Okay. <laughs> Any ICE vehicles? Do their motors function after they get through a crash test? I don't think so. And Teslas, do they function after? No. They don't drive the, you know, I don't know. Do they? Maybe somebody can tell me. But anybody that's doubting the uh, sturdiness of the endurance, what else? Okay, just read read it. You know, uh, there's nothing else to say here. All right, this is MXUX.